Hey, thanks for tuning in to the Land and Home Show. Today we are reviewing the residential market of the last quarter. Hi, I'm Stephen J.B. Davis, your land specialist and residential realtor here in Central Kentucky and beyond. Uh, today we are talking all about quarter three of the residential market as well as how things are looking today. Um, let's just jump right into it. Um, so last quarter, seller's market, nothing surprising there. Um, quarter three is often the most productive, most competitive, most activity, et cetera, et cetera, in the Lexington market and the surrounding ones. Um, it's just when most people buy houses. Um, but I want to break things down into three little price groups here. And the first is the $200,000 to $500,000 uh, category. Excuse me. Um, we're going to focus on Fayette County, where Lexington is, as well as the six counties around it. This is where most residential sales are happening in the Lexington area. Again, Louisville is a Totally separate thing, an hour away. Um, so 200,000 to 500,000, uh, we had 860 homes sold, single family homes sold, where um, between July, August, and September, uh, 99 to 100% of list price was paid. Um, that range just represents the fact that there's a stat for original list price and then the actual list price that may have resulted from a price reduction. But either way, you split it 99 to 100%. Uh, 698 out of those 860 homes sold in 30 days or less. Um, the median price for homes between 200,000 and 500,000 was 310 thousand dollars that's a lot of numbers um the average price was three hundred twenty four thousand dollars on average you're getting three beds two baths nothing crazy there that's also the median bathroom and bedroom configuration if we move on to five hundred one thousand dollars all the way to a dollar shy of one million there were 171 homes sold in third quarter uh paying anywhere between 98 to 100 percent of the list price or original list price um, 118 out of those 171 homes sold in 30 days or less median price for the home sold six hundred ten thousand dollars the average price for home sold was six hundred fifty four thousand dollars both the average and median for beds and baths was four beds three baths uh, finally, we get to the $1 million plus range. Um, I guess it's not technically a range because I did not put a maximum on this. This is just a minimum of $1 million sold price into whatever else sold higher than that. Um, 97 to 99% of list was sold, uh, <clears throat> was paid rather. Uh, the vast majority sold in 30 days or less. And uh, the median and average were right at 1.3 million dollars i think one was like 1.278 something something the other one was like 1.3 so virtually the same um so that's what the seller's market looked like from a price breakdown bedroom breakdown i did not do a bedroom breakdown on the 1 million plus because uh things just get different when you get above a million dollars you could pay 1.3 million dollars and live in the country um in in fayette county and be on 10 acres. You could pay $1.3 million and live downtown in a, a fantastic historic home on a quarter of an acre. One could be 4,000 square feet, the other one could be six. There's just too much you know, difference there. But if we move on to interest rates, I just wanna, uh, we're gonna start talking about the market today, but where we've come from in quarter three was July where you were consistently under 7% for a 30-year mortgage. Um, we broke that 7% sometime in August. I think it was during the first week. In September, we moved past that by a lot into like the mid sevens and upper sevens. And today, oh, yesterday, someone's burning something. Sorry, uh, I just saw like ash floating past me. Uh, today we are at 8.3. And by today, I actually mean November 13th, which was yesterday. Today is November 14th. I've not technically checked, but we're above the 8% mark. And uh, well, 
we've got a lot to talk about. Um, I'm calling the market that we're in a quagmire market. Um, we're technically we're in a seller's market, uh, meaning there is little supply, there is high demand. Um, homes are not artificially high in price in the sense that they are appraising um, for the prices that they're sold for. Um, but on the flip side, you have buyers who are not buying. Um, like they need to buy, the demand there is, is there, they're looking, um, but the circumstances around which they will say, yes, I want this house have totally changed. And um, it's, it's the market conditions. I want to um, say that in this market, it is normal, especially in this quarter, whether it's a good market, bad market, however you want to define that, um, there are always fewer people bar buying in the fourth quarter, less people move, there's just less activity. Um, things do tend to sit longer, um, but we are seeing a longer, longer um, here. Um, what's new in this, this interest rate thing is just what buyers are having to come out of their pocket for. Um, I want to make this very concrete, so follow along. Um, six months ago, a $300,000 house um, at a 4.5% interest rate with 20% down would cost you around $1,215 a month. Okay, And that's just principal and interest. It's not any home insurance or anything like that. Um, just principal and interest. Um, today, that same $300,000 house at 8% interest uh, costs $1,760. That is really, really big difference. We're talking over $500 difference. And again, these are just principal and interest numbers. We've not added in any sort of property taxes that are often paid with people's mortgages and, and home insurance, things like that. So $500 plus dollar difference in what you're spending every month to be in a home. If you take the same house and you use a FHA type of loan, uh, which means you're putting 3.5% down on a 30-year mortgage, six months ago at 4.5%, that would have cost you $1,475 a month principal and interest only. Today, that same house, $300,000, FHA loan with 3.5% down as a down payment, 8% interest, now costs $2,160. This is what has changed. This is the pressure. People who were pretty comfortable in moving into a home at $300,000, I mean, let's not even talk about 600,000 or 700,000 or whatever, because um, those numbers only get bigger, right? It's just basic math there. But um, people that could have afforded a $300,000 house six months ago, not six years ago, six months ago, in 2023, are now having to find five to seven to eight to $900 a month extra in order to make their payment for their home. Um, that's a rapid change in this economy with, uh, hate to keep talking about inflation, but it is real. We all know it. Costs more to travel on a plane, costs more to travel in a car because of gas, costs more to get groceries, costs more to get goods uh, in your home, clothes, shoes. It costs more to have cable. It costs more. So you're talking about a, a middle income earner trying to get into a, a normal house for $300,000 and having to find five to nine hundred extra dollars, depending on their credit worthiness, extra just to just to pay their mortgage like that is that's real pressure. It's crazy. And so to put it in a different perspective, if someone's in, let's call it, I don't know, thirty five hundred square feet and they want to downsize to something that's 2,000 square feet that costs $300,000, their mortgage is going to be higher. They're going to lose money. Like, that's the pressure. If you're a seller, you might say, well, what does that have to do with me? Well, 
you need a buyer to, in order to close the deal. And so to sellers, I think um, a big takeaway here is that the market has objectively changed. Um, it may, there may be some variations depending on your neighborhood and things like that, but if you're a seller, you have to really figure out if you're serious about selling um, and examine examine the the spectrum on which you feel good about the deal and are financially benefited about the deal that closes when it comes to what that final price is because all in all what this is boiling down to is we got to lower some prices we have to um, your house will sit and and if you're in a position where you can sit great good for you but if you're in a position where um, you know you don't have the luxury of time. I mean, all deals come down to time or money. Um, if you don't have the time, then that means that you probably you need some capital. You need to sell. If you do have the time, you can wait until next year. You can keep your house listed at whatever price you want, and you don't have to move. That's the kind of dynamic I'm talking about. And so there's a spectrum on which, you know, is it a slam dunk kind of deal where I walk away with a hundred K in this market? I mean, I'm using imaginary numbers that a hundred K may have just changed to 75 and 75 still leaves you in an objectively good position. You may not feel as good about it, but you feel it's still a win. So defining a win on a spectrum is really important here because, um, if you, if you need to get a deal done, if you need to sell your home, um, it's not going to look like it did six months ago, let alone a year ago. So sellers, it's really about your motivation. That's really what it comes down to. Are you motivated? Are you highly motivated to sell? Do you need to sell? Or is your motivation low? Do you sit out and wait? Um, but if, if you're expecting buyers to come to the table with zero requests, uh, you're dreaming. The last thought I want to leave you with is just advice. Um, as everyone is pressured, like sellers are pressured, buyers are pressed, everyone's feeling pressure. To that point, pressure often leads us to revert to these emotionally led decision making uh, situations and just emotionally led reasoning. And while emotions are important, um, sometimes they can lead us astray. And I just want to bring some realities to, to your attention if you're watching still. One is real estate is an exchange. One party has money, one party has a property. I think some people forget that they literally need the other side in order to make anything happen. People get very caught up in um, this idea of I win, they lose or I've lost and they've won. And in reality, because it's the, the negotiations, the nature of negotiations is, well, I'm probably gonna lose something and they're probably gonna lose something, but this is what I'm getting in return. You have to really stay focused on what defines a win for you, not for the other side. You don't know their story. You don't get to know their story. It's not a merger and acquisition where you get to go through their books and find their pain points and, and see where they've traded in the past. Like You don't get to see that. Your leverage is your, your deal, your terms, your, your agent that you're working with. Like that is, That's what you have to work with. You have to define what is a win for yourself you have to define what is a loss for yourself. Perspective. Perspective is huge. You've got to think about your own situation and what your thresholds are and, and move on in, in that fashion. And just think about why you're doing it. Um, get on that spectrum of happiness. And, and ideally, you want to be as close to the, the happiest end. But in this market, it's going to be really tough. Um, I hope that made sense. That's all I got. Um, that's the market for now. Uh, Thanksgiving's coming up. I hope that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I probably, uh, I might not be making a video before then, but we'll see. Uh, please leave your questions, comments below. Uh, let me know if you need help buying or selling a home or some land here in central Kentucky and beyond. With that, thanks for watching. Adios.